Hey guys, how's it going? I'm doing this video on recognizing demonic activity in your life. Now, before you're able to recognize the demonic activity, you need to have an understanding of what demons are themselves. Now, demons are not an it, but they are persons without bodies. You need to understand that when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, he was able to deceive one third of the angels and they were cast out of heaven with him. Okay, he was able to deceive them to get them to follow him and not the one true God. So right now we are on earth where these demons, or as the King James calls them, devils, unclean spirits, or evil spirits, are operating. Ephesians 2.2, 2, it says, Wherein time past ye worked, uh, uh, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, Right there we see that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So he has authority. We're going to look at that as we get into Ephesians 6.12 in a moment. But you need to understand, Satan is not bound in hell right now. Okay, And he's not confined to this earth. We can see in um, just the beginning of Job. Let me go there real quick. In the beginning of Job, we see... That in one seven it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. So, what is he doing? He's looking for people who he can devour, who he can deceive, who he can drag to hell with him, because he's jealous that we have a shot at eternal life in heaven, and he doesn't. So that's why he's trying to bring people to hell because misery loves company, okay, as we should all know. But going back to Ephesians, we see also that it's the spirit, he has the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Now it's not just his spirit only, okay, that's clear from just reading the gospels. You can see Jesus casting unclean spirits out of people and those spirits weren't Satan himself, okay. Satan has, you know, unclean spirits and evil spirits or demons that are under him and they serve him and they do his work. That is why they're working in your life. And in this video, we're going to talk about recognizing them and what they do and, you know, the things of those sorts. But first, let me go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Most people, even a lot of Christians, are only focused on what they can physically see, smell, touch, you know, all these things. And you need to get out of that mindset because that's a carnal mindset. The Bible says a carnal mind is enmity with God. We're told to walk in the Spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit, that means you need to be aware of the spiritual realm. And if you're aware of the spiritual realm you need to understand that we have a spiritual enemy, okay? And as it says in Ephesians 6, 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now that word wrestle is very interesting because when you look at martial arts and all forms of combat, wrestling is the one that is the most up close and personal form of combat, okay? That's the one that is really personal. You're up close, wrestling. That is very important to see. It goes on to say, but against principalities, plural, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness. Now, this is why you need to understand the wickedness is in the spiritual realm, okay? And the spiritual realm always has a, you know, physical repercussion in the natural that we operate in. So demons are not always something we physically see but we can see their work manifest into the physical, you see? So it's important to understand that, but people who don't believe in the spiritual realm, they don't acknowledge it, they don't realize that it's serious, they don't realize that they have a spirit and that they're eternal. Most people don't want to think of the fact that when they die, they are going to go to either heaven or hell. People like to reject this idea because they want to reject the studying, they want to reject making a decision. They just want to live in the flesh, okay? And that's exactly what Satan wants you to do. That's exactly what the demons want you to do. But I looked at these words very carefully in Ephesians 6.12. The first one I looked at was principalities, okay? And I looked up the definition of it, and 
I came up with a definition. It says assigned to states, regions, small or large, cities, institutions, or governments, or groups of people. So you need to understand that principalities, plural, are you know demonic beings who are assigned to states. They're assigned to regions, groups, or small or large regions, cities, institutions, governments, or groups of people. Okay, this is very important to understand and very interesting to study. Now it goes on to say in Ephesians 6, 12, but against principalities, against powers. Now power indicates authority and the ability to direct or influence the behavior of others. I found that very interesting because that's exactly what demons do. They are able to direct and influence the behavior of others. That's why you do things you don't want to do, okay, in regards to sin. And that's why it says in Galatians 5.17, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And uh, the spirit, these are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would, okay? You need to understand we are to die to self. Now, the next one is world rulers. This indicates the ability to control global influence. As I read earlier, um, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 3. It goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world... Notice that it's talking about Satan is the God of this world right now. Most people don't understand that. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Right there, people are being deceived by these, these demons, okay? These unclean spirits, these evil spirits, these devils, okay? Ministers of Satan, which the scripture also tells us they are transformed into ministers of righteousness. Very important to catch that. But the next one is uh, the spiritual wickedness. It goes on to say against, against spiritual wickedness in high places now we know that the high places is is a reference to the heavenly okay the spiritual realm but right there it says these are the forces coming against you and me that's the definition i came up with for that one so very important to understand so we see that we have a spiritual enemy okay now the seven traits that i want to write down for you know these these demons how you can recognize them is what I'm going to get into next. So number one, the first thing they do is they deceive. Okay, that's number one. That's the one that was most important to me. And we're going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, you need to understand this Bible was written about 2,000 years ago, around there, so I'd say it's safe to assume we are in the latter times, am I right? It goes on to say, In the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Right there. We're told in Ephesians 6.12 we're wrestling against these spirits, these unclean spirits, these evil spirits, these principalities, okay? Against spiritual wickedness. Because what are they doing? They're trying to deceive you from coming to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, okay, and the life. None come to the Father but by me, Jesus said. That's a bold statement, and the fact that that doesn't catch more people's attention, because when somebody claims to be the truth, I want to understand why. But most people don't, because they're just stuck in the flesh, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the eyes of them which believe not. Okay, but right there. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Did you, like I mentioned, okay, did you know that demons are the ones responsible for pushing these false doctrines? This is why God wants you to trust in Him and lean not on your own understanding. Because He wants us to have discernment, but to be, to be able to discern between the clean and the unclean, the true and the false, okay? Because a lot of people are going to be deceived, like I mentioned, demons have knowledge, okay? And they have a lot more knowledge than both you and me. Like I said, they were around a lot longer than both of us. So their, their knowledge and their understanding, the level of their wisdom is much higher than ours. 
And that's why they're pushing these false doctrines, guys. This is why we need to read the word and to rely on God and ask God to, to show us the truth. Because that is one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit, is to reveal the truth to us in all things. So, another scripture I have is like 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter, what is it, 11, 14, and 15. Like I said, guys, it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. But right there we see that Satan is able to come as the angel of light because he wants to, you know, um, copy everything Jesus does. Okay, he wants to deceive people and his ministers, okay, Satan's followers, whether they're people or demons, they will transform themselves into ministers of righteousness to make it seem like they are of God, okay? This is such a big one, guys. And now let's go to number two. I have the word entice. Well, I'll put also tempt, okay? Now the scripture I have for that one is James 1.14. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed okay demons their first job is to deceive you they don't want you to become a christian they don't want you to come to the knowledge of the truth if you do become a christian and you come to the knowledge of the truth their second job is to keep you powerless to keep you being from being used by god to keep you from being effective okay and you know that's just their main jobs but number two they entice okay and they tempt how do they do that? They entice with sin. They entice with the lust of the flesh, okay, the pride of life. And um, in Genesis, we see the first form of enticement when um, the serpent beguiled Eve. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3 real quick. In verse 1 through 5, now it says, now the, the serpent was more subtle, right there, okay, subtle, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now right here is the very first lie Satan told in the Bible. Okay, This is the first lie that shows up. And it goes on to say, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. He said, You won't die. He literally just contradicted what God said. God said, You will die if you eat of this tree. Satan said, Ye shall not surely die. And he enticed her in verse 5, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Does that sound familiar? I hear that a lot in the prosperity teachings. And knowing good and evil, he enticed her with something she didn't have. Doesn't Satan do that with everybody? He entices with money. He entices with men, with women. Okay, He entices you with things that you don't have, that you want. And most of the time, nine times out of ten, it's something of the world. It's something that has to do with the flesh. Okay, Very important to understand that. And he tempts. And he tempts you guys. Like it says in James... Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Demons know what you like and what you don't like. They know everything you know. Okay, that's they're, they're known as familiar spirits is what the Bible calls them. They're demons that have been with you your whole life. Okay, and I'll get more into that in another video. You can hit me up if you have a question. I just got a lot I need to get through. So number three, I put compel. Now this list I kind of compiled from listening to Win Worley and Derek or Derek Prince and stuff like that. But number three, I got compel. They compel you to do what you don't want to do. Okay, this is a spiritual warfare between the spirit and the flesh. Okay, when you're compelled to go out and smoke a cigarette, you're compelled to go out with your friends and drink for the night and have fun and party. Okay. There's a spirit behind that compelling feeling you're experiencing, okay? 
because it's not of God. When you're compelled to sin, you need to understand that's a demonic spirit, okay? Now, number four, I got afflict. They afflict, and they also bound, keep you in bondage. For that one, I have the scripture, um, Luke 13, 6. And this is when uh, Jesus healed that woman who was uh, bowed over. I'm pretty sure. Luke 16, 13. I think I mismarked it. But yeah, I think it was a scripture. No, I think it's uh, Luke 13, 16. Sorry, I had it backwards. 13, 16, it says, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound? Now, she's a woman of faith, but Satan was still able to bound her. And she was bound 18 years, okay? Remember I said in my other video, she was bowed over, okay? She couldn't stand up straight. She was crippled on the back. And that was bondage from Satan, okay? They caused physical afflictions. We'll get more into that as I get into the other stuff but let's go to the next one number five they enslave enslave okay romans chapter 6 verse 16 is the scripture i wanted to use for that one it says know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness now when you're stuck in sin you're a slave to sin until you overcome it okay james says resist the devil and he shall flee from you but the demons don't want to flee from you that's why they're trying to keep you in bondage to sin okay you're enslaved to cigarettes you're enslaved to drugs you're enslaved to masturbation and pornography you're enslaved to some kind of sin or if you are if you're enslaved to some kind of sin, you're dealing with demonic activity in your life and they're keeping you bound. That is not of God. Let's go to number six. They defile. I like this one because it's, Jesus says, um, Matthew 15, says Matthew 15 18 it says but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man now you need to understand when people always are cussing okay that's demonic you need to understand that is not of God it talks about that in James chapter 3 you know out of the same mouth proceedeth cursings and you know with the same tongue we bless God and he says my brother in this these things ought not to be but basically, you know, I heard Derek Prince explain it in a good way. He said, you know, a spirit or a demon of blasphemy needs a tongue to blaspheme through. Okay, a spirit of lust needs, you know, eyes and sexual organs to, you know, fulfill its sexual immorality. You need to understand demons are persons without bodies and they are ungodly in every sense of the way. So they are vile, disgusting creatures full of wickedness, and they are looking for people. They want to occupy people because that's what they are. Remember, we are made in God's image, okay? Now, I don't know if they, they aren't. Obviously, they're disgusting creatures now in the spiritual realm. I don't know what they look like exactly. But they are trying to fulfill their wickedness through our flesh, and we let them in through sin, through ignorance. God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, okay? And that's a big one, okay? But right there, they defile a person, okay? In any way they can, they defile you through fulfilling lust, okay? Through cussing, through addiction, and things like that, guys. And number seven, this is the one I want to look at the most, is torment. Okay, torment. Now, for that one, I have First John... This scripture came to mind when I got that one. Torment is 1 John 4.18. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect fear or perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. Now, there's also a lot of other ways that demons torment people, you know, especially like at nighttime and through dreams and nightmares and stuff like that. And we'll look at that stuff now because 
There's three main ways that they torment, okay? Physically, mentally, and spiritually. Let's also put emotionally here. Emotionally. Because emotionally, mentally, same thing in the sense that I want to explain it. Now, for physically, sickness. I believe all sickness and disease is demonic. Okay, and this is shown in Scripture. Let's go to Luke 4.39. Luke 4.39. It says, and he stood over her. Okay, Jesus was standing over Peter's mom, and she had a fever, and he rebuked the fever. It's important to understand and catch that, okay? He rebuked the fever that was in Peter, Peter's mom. But let's go to Matthew 9.20. Matthew 9.20 goes on to say, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. Okay, remember we saw that Satan bound a woman for 18 years. Okay, you can be bound by Satan for your whole life until you realize that the power of Jesus Christ can heal you. The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. So right there we see that a woman was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years and she came to him and touched the hem of his garments and she he, she was healed. Okay? She said within herself if I may touch his garment I shall be whole and Jesus said daughter be of good cheer good comfort thy faith hath made thee whole. But right there we see disease. Now obviously there wasn't proof text that it was caused by a demon. But let's go to Matthew 4.24. It says, And his fame went throughout all Syria, talking about Jesus, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, remember torments, and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And he healed them all, guys. It's just so amazing, guys. But you need to understand that. And... I believe also cancer is demonic. There is a cancer demon. Call me crazy if you want, but you'll understand these things when you get into deliverance and you witness the power of God yourself. You will understand these truths, and some people will disagree, but we need to understand that a lot of people are deceived by Satan, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Okay? The spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. So people are either controlled by demonic spirits or the Holy Spirit. People who don't have Jesus and people who are not Christian are not controlled by the Holy Spirit. There's only one alternative, guys, and that's what it comes down to. But right there I got cancer. I also STDs as well. STDs are a curse from God also. You need to understand um, death. Deafness and blindness. I'll look at a couple scriptures with that one. And blindness. All right. So, Mark nine twenty five, real quick. Says, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto them, Thou dumb and deaf spirit. So right there we see that demons are responsible for causing deafness. Even blindness as well. And people who can't speak, okay? This is a demon blocking that. And that person needs to have faith in Jesus. And the power of God, the power of the name of Jesus Christ can heal somebody who is blind, who is deaf, who can't speak, okay? Any type of physical affliction, I believe, can be cured by Jesus. But we need faith, guys. And I did a video on that, on how we need more of it, because we need to be operating in these gifts. Jesus was healing everybody, you know. And, you know, Jesus said, thou dumb and deaf spirit. He acknowledged the spirit that was in the person, causing the dumb, the dumbness and the deafness. And he says, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more. Okay, and then the spirit cried out and rent. And then the you know, he fell as one dead, and so much that many said he is dead, but Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And, you know, you can read more about it. And then the next one I want to write down is addiction. 
all forms of addiction, guys, whether you're addicted to drugs, whether you're addicted to pornography, whether you're addicted to food or, you know, anything like that. Any type of addiction where you're overly compulsive, you know, you're compelled to do something, that's demonic, guys. Any type of eating disorder, I'll just put ED. Any type of eating disorder is demonic, guys. That kind of goes in with the addiction things because... You know, people who are anorexic, they, they're compelled to not eat, okay, due to, you know, spirit, spirits that are deceiving them, okay? And then, you know, just to sum it up, all physical, physical um, disabilities. All physical disabilities, guys, I believe are demonic in origin. Now, I know there's understandings that you know, we should be taking care of ourselves and sicknesses can come about from, you know, unhealthy lifestyles and things like that, but stuff like that. You just need to understand the spiritual wickedness that we're also against, guys. Satan wants to keep us in bondage. Now, Luke thirteen sixteen is the one I read about the one the woman was bowed over. And then Matthew twelve ten. I want to look at Matthew twelve ten real quick. It says and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. Okay, right there. So we see physical d disabilities in the Bible. This man had a crippled hand. And Jesus healed it. Okay. You can read about that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 10, you know, through 13, I think. So right there, Jesus healed a crippled man's hand. I believe we are able to heal people who are bound to wheelchairs. Jesus, you know, healed that one man and he said, take up thy bed and walk. Okay. But let's go to uh, emotionally and mentally. I have a lot more. I don't know if I'm going to have time to cover all this, but doubt and confusion is the first one. Doubt and confusion. So doubt and confusion. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. It says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So we need to understand when you're confused, that's not of God. God is not the author of confusion, guys. Now it goes on, depression. Depression. Also, anger. The Bible says to be slow to anger in James 1.19. Also, fear, like I read earlier. Fear hath torment, guys. Fear is not of God. In order to get rid of fear, we need to draw closer to God and know that he is with us, guys. Jesus said he's with us whithersoever we go at the end of uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Also, rejection. Rejection. And um, what else? Anxiety as well. Any type of... Uh, Rejection, guys. Anxiety. Any type of rejection you've ever experienced in your life allowed a demon to come into your life. Okay, allowed a demon into you. Whether you're rejected by your parents, rejected by a loved one, you know, a spouse, any anything like that, guys, that causes, you know, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It lowers your self-esteem, okay, and it, it hurts you. And any type of hurt comes from not having our whole focus on God, okay? You know, he said, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. That means happiness, joy, peace, fulfillment, all these things. But when we try to find those things apart from God, we are vulnerable to being hurt. And then when we face rejection, it breaks us down, guys. It's just important to understand, and like anxiety as well. Anxiety is not of God. Let's go also to regret. Regret is demons enticing you, okay, to dwell on the past. It's demonic, guys. And then, you know, we have lust. Like we read in James, every man is tempted. Um, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So we see how, you know, Satan entices as well. Demons do the same thing. And, you know, for sake of time, I'm not going to write the rest of them, but the other ones was all phobias. Any type of phobia you have is not of God. It's demonic. Loneliness, like I mentioned, Matthew 28, 20. Jesus said he's with us whithersoever we go. 
suicide. There is a spirit of suicide. I'll actually write that one down. Suicide. If there's any misspellings, forgive me. But uh, there is a spirit of suicide. Any suicidal tendencies or thoughts, that's not of God. You need to understand that is a demon. That's actually a principality. It's a powerful demon, guys. It's a strong man in some cases. And the last one I have is coveting. I'll write that one too. Coveting. This is actually the 10th commandment, guys. Coveting. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, it says, Thou shalt not covet, it says, thy neighbor's house. Thy, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, coveting is a bad thing, okay? And that's demonic. So spiritually... Just for sake of time, I have like three minutes left. It hinders prayer and reading. Hinders prayer and reading. The reason why you can't focus when you're reading your Bible is demons in your mind. There is a way for self-deliverance. I'll give you guys some uh, references if you need it. Demons will block gifts. They will block gifts. And blessings. Yes, guys, they have the ability to block gifts, block blessings, and they will hinder your growth in the Lord. The Bible tells us to grow in knowledge and in grace. When you see Christians who have been Christian for 10 years and yet they're the same, still living in sin, it's because they haven't overcome their demons, they haven't even engaged in spiritual warfare. They haven't really even entered day one of Christianity, okay? It's very important to understand that you should be growing as a Christian. If there has been a period where you're a Christian and it's just been the same, you need to understand that is not of God. That's demons working against you guys. And you need to be aware of that so you can overcome and fight the enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now the next one, it keeps you in the flesh. Remember, walk in the spirit, guys. Keeps you in the flesh. Sorry, my writing's getting a little sloppy. And the last one, it causes nightmares. Guys, if you have nightmares, if you're struggling with nightmares, the Lord told me to tell you guys that. Plead the blood of the Lamb over you every single night before you go to bed. Plead the blood of the Lamb over your mind, over your thoughts, over your feelings, emotions, over your spirit, over your soul, and over your flesh. And I also do it over my home, over my animals, and over my, you know, other family members. Do this every single night before you go to bed. If you're being tormented at night, this should stop it, or at least greatly decrease it, okay? Demons come against you hard at night. This is why you have twisted, perverted dreams, and people wake up and they're like, what was that all about? It's demonic. You're being attacked, and demons will disguise themselves as people you know to try to get you to lust and perform sexually immoral things in the spirit realm in hopes it'll manifest into the physical and get you to fulfill that lust so that's it guys you know just check it out write it down take a picture or whatever you know if it's helpful for you guys i'm running out of time so that's about it guys i'll be doing more videos if you have any questions contact me